Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV. Here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Jayco Eagle 357 MDOK. You guys have picked a really nice fifth wheel. I'm here to show you around it, show you how to use a few things. Let's start by arriving at the campsite. First, as you'll notice, I've over, already opened up your slides because I want you to see on your campsite, you're gonna need enough room for the slide to come out, plus for the cover for your outdoor grill area to flip. And then on your off campsite, you have all these slides to take into consideration. So make sure that you can park accordingly. Nothing's gonna hinder these slides from coming in or out, preferably nothing hanging directly over them. Also want you to think about where your water and electricity hookups are. Your power is gonna be head just ahead of the middle slide on your off camp side. The same thing with your docking station. All your water will be in here. So park accordingly so that you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once you arrive, our hitch man will go over on hooking the hitch with you. Coming inside here. On your auto leveling system. You're gonna hold these two buttons down, up and down button. That's gonna turn it on. Once it's on, you can raise or lower your front jacks just like that to get your hitch unhooked. And then once your hitch is all unhooked, you have your landing legs at the level you need, nice and level. Go ahead and hit auto level. Auto level is gonna bring down your auto leveling jacks and level everything all, all out nice for you. Further instructions should you need them. Once you get a unit level, stable, we're gonna go ahead and hook up our power and water. Now on these new Furion cords, I wanna show you how these hook up. Simply to press it in at an angle here, there's a little groove that goes into, and then turn it to the right, and then turn on your gray washer. If you see a light there, you know you've got power. 50 amp service. Should you need it, you'd have a dog bone, bring it from 50 down to 30. And if you really need it, if you want to plug in at home, there's a 30 down to 110 adapter. You'll be able to hook up to a 110 just like that is. Got our power hooked up and took our water up. Come inside your docking station. Jayco made it pretty easy. Down here in the bottom right, use your city tank fill. We're hooking up at a campsite. Set it just the way they are now. Green to the left, blue to the right. Open up your city water connection. Take your water pressure regulator. I always use this water pressure regulator when putting fluid into the unit. Um, it's gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines inside the unit. Hook that up and hook your hose up, but don't turn your water on yet. Just to the right here is your hot water heater. All we're doing at this point, this will come right off. All we're doing at this point is making sure our rod and drain plug are back in. You may have left that out from last time you were camping. Put that in, make it nice and secure with a socket. Then you can go ahead and turn on your hot water heater. Now if your hot water heaters, or if your hose has been out for a while, you're gonna come up to this pressure release valve. You're gonna pull on that, release air out of the lines. Eventually you get a nice steady flow of water coming out of here. Once you do, you know your hot water heater is full and can be turned on from inside. A couple other things on this. Down at the bottom, you will see an on off switch. This is not where you turn it on. Only turn on your hot water heater down here if you're hooked up to 110. 
up above. If your hot water heater is not working, come out here and open this up and see if these are bubbled out. Simply press the bubble back in, it'll reset your hot water heater. Now for camping and we're dry docking. We're not gonna use a city hookup. We're out dry camping right there in the middle, dry camp. Simply turn your green down, fill your water to the same spot. Just this time, you're gonna to wanna to turn on your water pump. You can turn it on here or you can turn it on indoors. Only use your water pump when using potable water. Don't use it when hooked up to city water, it's already pressurized. There's where you sanitize, winterize the unit. Simple instructions there. We've got our water and electricity hooked up. Let me go ahead and walk you around the rest of the unit and show you a few more things. In the docking station, you'll see that your unit is prepped for solar. You can plug in a solar panel right there and it'll trickle charge your batteries. You have this outdoor shower with this big spray port that goes on it. Now here's your hot water heater bypass. It's on bypass right now because your unit's been winterized. Again, your water pump, your black tank flush, which we'll talk about when leaving the campsite, your satellite cable and auxiliary hookups, city and fresh water, and where you put your fluid in to winterize. Below that, your tank holding handles. That's where you'll pull them out when we dump your tank later. And then down at the bottom is a hole that you can run all of your cords down through. Coming inside your storage area, you do have a 110 here with a light. Over here next to your auto leveling systems, your 12 volt. This is your battery disconnect. We'll talk about that later when talking about your 12 volt carbon dioxide detector. That'll come important. One of your two propanes, one's on the other side. You do have a regulator here. Simply point the handle that, toward the tank you wish to be using, the one on the other side or the one on this side. And left to open. Again, your hot water heater. This is your furnace heat release. Should you be running your furnace, steer clear of this, it'll get rather warm. Your power. These are called wipers on the side of your slide. I just want to mention they have wiper fluid in our store. It's going to keep these real pliable and add longevity to the life of your wipers. As you see, where it says Solera slide toppers, that's just so they know what kind to put on and where to put them on if you ever get slide toppers for this. This will be access to the back of your fridge. That is a hood vent for your microwave. There's a low point drain down here. Much easier to access when our slide's closed. Dump that one leaving the campsite. You have your ladder, go up and check your seams. Caulk as needed. Your unit is also prepped for a Furion backup camera. Should you decide to purchase one from our store, it's a device that sets on the dash of your tow vehicle, giving you a backup camera on the unit. Remember, anything I mentioned from our store, you do have a 10% off coupon to use. Utilize that while you're here. On this front campsite slide, there's a spare tire manual crank. There's your crank. There's where that'll hook up. And there's your spare tire. Your outdoor kitchen. Your lights are here on the side. Accent light and your main lights. Your grill that pulls out. Once you have this out underneath here is your quick connect for LP. And the other part is right here at the back of the unit. There's your cord to hook that up. This is all prepped for a television as well. Bracket uh, backer here, 12 volt or 110 and your cable. Also have a GFC, uh, GFCI reset 110 out here. You have a slide on your, or excuse me, an awning on your campsite slide and your big awning here. I'll run those out to show you how far to run those out. It's camping at night, turn this light on. A little accent light that allows you to be able to see the steps better. Again, your stabilizing jack pads. A little separate sink and prep area up here. Your light of course, at 110. You'll see a couple of these in unit one out here and one indoors. Furion sells a uh, Bluetooth speaker. It's all pre-wired for this. You can buy those and put it on there. The other low point drain. 
to talk about putting leaving the campsite again. And again, your big pass-through storage, which is also prepped with a 110 and a cable hookup. If you want to put a TV out here, your other propane tank, another 110 way up here in the front, more storage in the front. Here's your batteries. Recommend checking your battery post now and then, making sure that nothing's wiggled loose as you're going down the road. Push your landing legs. And we're back around to our docking station. That about covers everything out here. Let's go take a look on the inside. Coming up the steps inside your unit now. First and foremost, just to the left, make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows that the fire extinguisher is by the entry door in case of an emergency. Also coming in your entry door, a few things right on this wall. Immediately is your 12 volt carbon monoxide detector. Reason I mentioned this is 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're gonna be gone for the day and you're not plugged in where anything's run charging your battery, go ahead and use your battery disconnect up front so this doesn't run your battery down. To the right here on the floor is your fuse box and breaker box. There's your breakers. Uh, it looks like you got mostly 15s in there. I highly recommend you have a handful of those when you go camping. A couple 25s as well. Up here on the wall, you'll see several of these throughout the unit. This just helps the thermostat. It's a temperature reader. Above that is your switch for your fan down there. And over here to the right, before talking about your control panel, I'll tell you this is where it's pre-wired for solar. If you ever decide to solar ready this whole unit, this is a template for the text, so leave that on there. And your control panel, touchpad. Several different ways you can do this. At the home button, you can control your temperatures. I'll go in there, you just turn on your air, you see the light, because it's down to 54. But you can go in here, you can change your temperatures by raising that up. Now kick it onto the furnace. Lights, you can touch this and scroll and go through and turn on all the lights throughout the unit. Hit the home button to go back. Motors, you can handle your stabilizing jacks from in here. Tanks, you can see the level of all your tanks. Up above here is where you'll turn on your water pump if you use a potable water, your water heater if you're hooked up to electric, and your water heater if you're hooked up to gas. Just simply touch it to turn it on. Go back to home. And the energy will just show you where you're getting your energy from. You can do the same things from over here. Hit the temperature and that'll change fan, mode, cool, to heat, etc. Now let's talk about your slides and your awnings. Come in and touch this button right here, and you've got numbers. Slide four, slide three, slide two, slide one. Awning one, excuse me, awning two, awning one. Pair, you can pair this device. All you have to do is download the PM or the BM Pro from Jayco to your phone, and you can actually stand outside and run your slides out. There's off. Slide four, three, two, one. I have all your slides out already. I'm gonna to go to your awnings. So putting this on awning one now, hit extend. Ran it most of the way out. I just wanna show you, run it out until that white flap falls down and you can see your black bar. Then you know you're out far enough. Over here are your main unit lights. This will turn on and off your awning lights. And that'll turn off your main lights. Coming through your unit now, you'll see several of these throughout the unit. All the hours, different areas that you can turn on and off the lighting. Your table has storage underneath it on a hydraulic so it holds up. Coming over to your television. One thing I want to mention on this is in the back here where your cable hooks up. Around. 
there's a green light there that you can't see push that green light in make sure that lights on before scanning for your digital channels it's right where your cable tv hooks up it's a digital channel enhancer allow you to pick up more channels your jbl sound system will play your music indoors outdoors or both down here let's talk about your fireplace they're not just for looks anymore just turn it on it's starting to kick out heat the heat's on high so if you're at the campsite, you're plugged in, it's a little chilly in the morning or evening, crank this up. Use their electricity to warm it up in here instead of using up your gas. It'll get it toasty in here in no time. You can go through several different flames on that as well. But it's more than just pretty, it does provide heat. Next to the bed, a couple of USB ports and 110. I'm going to show you real quick on how to Turn your sofa into a bed. I like to stand in the middle. First off, these bags are just Velcroed on. Stand in the middle gives you a little more leverage. Lift this up, lift your legs out, pull it towards you. Lay it down and just that quickly. You have another sleeping quarters. Reverse the process to bring it back down. Again, stand in the middle. This gives you good leverage. Makes it a little easier job. Return your cushions. Just that quickly, you are back to a bed. Again, more of the lighting. Parachute pull recliners, little lever in here, you pull on that, gives you a recliner. You do have to push these down with your feet to put them back. Coming over to your stove. More lighting here. Another spot for the Furion Bluetooth speaker. Self-explanatory microwave. Just want to mention glass top makes an excellent backsplash you have a panel light here when you turn your gas on come over here hit your spark and there's your flame same thing for your oven turn it to this light and then hit your spark over here and that'll light your oven your all electric fridge separate manual for that should you need to Learn anything about it. Coming into your mid bunk room. Turn on some lights. This top bunk does lift up and lock in. This bed folds out the same way as the living room does. Do have some individual lighting here. And it's also prepped for a television. 110, 12 volt, couple USBs. On the side of your island is a freshwater drinking station. That's the pump for it. Um, there's a water bottle that stays up underneath. That'll bring the water up from there. 110s and USB ports in the island. And this is where that fresh drinking water will come up. In your ceiling, right in the middle of the living room is where your smoke alarm is. Coming up your hallway, this ladder will fold out to get up to the top bunk. Fold it back in for travel. Do you have 110s up there above the bed as well? Come back into your bathroom. All your lighting is here. 110. Just want to tell you, you got plumbing to maintain, just like you would at your home. Just keep an eye on it. 
Make sure nothing's wiggled loose as you're going down the road. Come back into your bedroom. Couple USB ports. This is also prepped for a television. Cables, 110s, satellite. Here and is also prepped for a washer and dryer should you ever want to put it in here. Couple of 110s next to the bed. One on this side. Another place to lay in bed and shut your lights off. Same thing here. Another temperature reader. And another 110 on this side of the bed. You also have all this storage up underneath the bed on a hydraulic jack. Now those are two fold away chairs that you can bring out to your dinette. That about covers everything on the inside. Let's close it up, act like we're leaving the campsite. First and foremost, all your slides. You want to make sure everything is clear. Make sure nothing is going to be impede these slides from coming in. Coming out into the living room and the bunk room. Make sure nothing's on the floor here. All seating is closed, all your drawers are closed over here. And in the bunk room, make sure your drawers are closed and this exterior door is closed. Now what, what I'd like to test, is come up here to number one, shut off all my ceiling lights. That shows me all these individual lights I need to go through and shut off. So I'm gonna walk through and do that real quick. So I went through and shut off all my lights. I'm gonna start retracting slides. Starting with one. One is gonna be your master bed bedroom. Once you get to slide one, simply hold the retract button down until you hear it's in all the way. That one's in. Go to the other way to slide two. That's gonna be your bunk room. And we'll continue on. As I bring slide four in this last one, your campsite, I want you to hear that little grinding noise. I want you to know it's okay to hear that. That's just the unit resetting or the slide keeping itself from sliding in too far. I'm gonna talk to you about your exterior doors. On the end of these, you do have feet that simply pull out to get further. Push this in to bring it up. Make sure your exterior door is all the way open. Otherwise, this will catch on it. Set your steps up in there. Close your exterior door. Lock and deadbolt your door. Lift and turn your handle. You're secure to hit the road. Unhook your gas. Make sure that's all unhooked. Come around. Up here to your low point drain. Open those up. Get around you off campsite. Unhook our water. You can leave your power hooked up for a moment or use your battery. Come back up here. Again, turn it on like this by holding them both down. Raise or lower your front to hook up your hitch, and then hit retract all. Retract all is going to lift all those stabilizing jacks up. Unhook your power, close your unit up, and head on up to the dump station. At the dump station, you're going to take the sewage hose, comes with your convenience pack, going to hook it up right here underneath your living room slide. Come up here and pull your black handle. Now if you pulled your black handle and it sounds like it's no longer draining, go ahead and leave that handle open. Come up here to your black tank flush. Again, with your water pressure regulator, hook this up to the hose that's at the dump station and turn it on for a good five minutes. What that's gonna do is gonna wash out with a sprayer your black tank and get all that nastiness out of there, keep the smell out of your unit. After you ran that for about five minutes, take your hose off, close that black handle, Pull your gray handle. When that one sounds like it's done, 
pull your other gray handle. Now these are gonna be cleaner waters, just sinks and showers, so it's gonna clean out your sewage hose for you. Then sanitarily store it away. While you're there, you wanna dump your hot water heater, open up this valve and get the water out of the lines with a socket because this does get hot water. Pull your drain plug and let your hot water drain. And head on down the road. Again, we thank you guys for your purchase of your Eagle. We hope you enjoy it for many years to come. Happy camping.